Joan of Arc, born around 1412 in the small village of Domremy in northeastern France, grew up in a modest peasant family. Her parents, Jacques d'Arc and Isabelle Romé, were farmers, and Joan was one of several children. Despite her humble background, Joan's early life was shaped by the intense religiosity of her family and the surrounding rural community. The Hundred Years' War between France and England deeply affected the region, and Joan was aware of the political and military turmoil from a young age. As a child, she showed signs of deep piety, attending church regularly, and being drawn to prayer and religious devotion. There are accounts that suggest Joan was kind and hardworking, assisting her family in the fields and performing household chores. Although she did not receive a formal education, she grew up with a strong sense of faith, which would become central to her later actions. The village of Domremy, though peaceful, was on the border of the contested territories, and Joan would have been aware of the dangers and hardships the war brought to her country. Her early years were marked by the blend of a simple, rural lifestyle and the overarching presence of a larger conflict that would eventually shape her destiny. Joan of Arc experienced significant events that shaped her path. During these years, Joan was still living in her small village of Domremy, where the ongoing conflict of the Hundred Years' War continued to affect daily life. By this time, the Burgundians, allies of the English, had seized parts of northern France, further destabilizing the region. Joan's life changed dramatically in 1424, when she began to experience visions and hear voices that she believed were sent by God. She claimed that these voices belonged to saints, including St. Saint Michael, St. Catherine, and St. Margaret. These divine messages called her to take action in support of Charles VII, the Dauphin of France, and to help rid the country of its English invaders. Joan kept these experiences mostly private at first, continuing to live as a simple peasant. The voices, however, became more persistent, urging her to leave her village and fulfill her mission to save France. By 1425, Joan was becoming increasingly convinced of her divine purpose, though she had not yet acted on the instructions from her visions. These formative years laid the groundwork for Joan's later bold actions in pursuit of what she saw as her God-given duty to protect her country and restore the rightful king. Joan of Arc's life took a dramatic turn as she went from an unknown peasant girl to a national hero and martyr. In 1425, her divine visions grew stronger, pushing her to take action. By 1428, she was determined to meet Charles VII, the Dauphin of France, and help him reclaim his throne from the English and their Burgundian allies. In early 1429, Joan left her village, dressed as a man to ensure her safety, and convinced local officials to support her mission. After gaining an audience with Charles VII, she impressed him with her conviction and predictions, which aligned with his own private concerns. Joan was eventually given command of a small army and sent to relieve the besieged city of Orleans in 1429. Against all odds, Joan led a series of successful assaults, lifting the siege and becoming a symbol of hope for the French. Her victories continued, and she played a key role in leading Charles VII to Reims, where he was crowned king in July 1429 fulfilling one of her key prophecies. However, Joan's fortunes changed in 1430 when she was captured by the Burgundians during a military campaign. They handed her over to the English, who put her on trial for charges of heresy and witchcraft. In 1431, after a politically motivated trial, Joan was found guilty and burned at the stake in Rouen. She died at the age of 19 but her legacy as a courageous and divinely inspired figure lived on, ultimately leading to her canonization as a saint in 1920. Joan of Arc is important for the history of France because she played a pivotal role in turning the tide of the Hundred Years' War in favor of the French. At a time when France was on the verge of collapse, Joan emerged as an unexpected leader, driven by her religious visions and deep sense of duty. Her successful leadership at the Siege of Orleans in 1429 revived French morale and marked a turning point in the war. Her efforts led to the coronation of Charles VII in Rams, solidifying his claim to the throne and boosting French national identity. Joan became a symbol of French unity 
and resistance against English domination. Her courage and conviction inspired future generations and helped shape the idea of France as a strong, independent nation. Even after her execution in 1431, Joan's legacy continued to grow, ultimately leading to her sainthood. She is remembered not only as a military leader, but as a national heroine who embodied French patriotism, faith, and resilience during one of the country's most challenging periods. Joan of Arc took part in key campaigns during the latter phase of the Hundred Years' War, a conflict between France and England over control of the French throne. Her most famous involvement was in the Siege of Orléans in 1429, where she led French forces to a decisive victory that marked a turning point in the war. This victory was followed by the successful Loire Campaign, where she helped liberate several towns from English control. After Orléans, Jean was instrumental in the campaign that led to the coronation of Charles VII in Reims, securing his legitimacy as the King of France. Later in 1430, she participated in a failed attempt to recapture Paris and was ultimately captured during a campaign to defend Compiègne from the Burgundians, allies of the English. These military actions helped solidify her role as a key figure in the Hundred Years' War, although her time as a military leader was brief. According to the church, Joan of Arc is regarded as a saint and a martyr. Initially, she was condemned by the church during her trial in 1431, where she was accused of heresy, witchcraft, and cross-dressing. The trial was politically motivated, controlled by the English and their allies, and she was found guilty and burned at the stake. However, in 1456, a posthumous retrial, initiated by Charles VII and conducted by the Catholic Church, declared Joan innocent of all charges. This retrial acknowledged the injustices of her original trial, and her reputation was restored. The Church recognized her visions as authentic, and her role as a devout, divinely inspired leader became central to her legacy. Joan's canonization process began in the 19th century, culminating in her being declared a saint by Pope Benedict XV in 1920. The Church honors her as a symbol of faith, courage, and patriotism. She is celebrated as a patron saint of France and remains a powerful figure in Catholic tradition representing the virtues of divine mission and sacrifice for the greater good.